What's your take on how do certain food combinations affect digestion? One you have to see that you don't combine acidic food with alkaline food. Also avoid taking too many different kind of protein. Street food holds a central place in people's life. The problem with the street food is depends upon the hygiene. So it can lead to the indigestion, so gastroenteritis like things. How do carbonated drinks contribute in gas, bloating and other digestive issues? Yes. So basically the carbonated drinks, no, the bubbles in that, they contain carbon dioxide. So CO2 it goes, goes in digestive system, it causes bloating. That is the main thing which causes carbonated drinks. And this impairs the digestion also. The people can have small frequent meals and regular exercise is important in a day to day life. If you want to lose weight, uh, don't think that there is any shortcut. So plan your meal properly. Hi everyone, myself Dr. Pawan, Medical Gastroenterology, Manipal Hospital, Bangalore. Hi everyone, this is Navnita Shah, Chief Dietitian from Manipal Hospital, Bangalore. And today we'll be talking about the lifestyle um, related issues that we are having because of a busy pace. Skipping meals may seem like a solution, hmm. uh, but it can actually aggravate the gastritis. What is your take on all this? Uh, my take actually the Patients who are more prone for gastritis, yes. the skipping meals better to avoid because the, the patient who are skipping meals, they will have more increased acid production. As per se, in the body daily the acid production will be going on. The food acts as a neutralizing agent just to reduce the acid production mm -hmm. and for the digestion basically. So if you skip the meals who are having more prone for gastritis, mm -hmm. this can lead to the worsening of gastritis compared to reducing it. Okay. So what according to suggestion, what we like gastroenterologists suggest is that to have a small frequent meals in a day like dividing like not having the bulk meals in it one or twice in a day divide the meals into like four to five times in a day in between like for morning you had a breakfast eight o'clock mm -hmm. you can have eleven o'clock small snacks right. or one or two o'clock like any smaller than lunch like you can divide space the meals like small frequent meals right mm -hmm. so it can have good effect on this for uh, digestion and also like stabilize the environment in the stomach which will be good for the, the more, which are more patients who are more from gastritis What's your take on how do certain food combinations affect digestion uh, and uh, there are any combinations to avoid for optimal digestive health? Okay, so when it comes to digesting food, the basic principle that works are one, um, uh, they have different enzymes right? that works, second they require a certain pH, some require acidic pH, some require uh, alkaline pH and the third is certain food takes less time to digest and certain food take more time to digest so um, one have to see that you don't combine acidic food with alkaline food like starch they are alkaline in nature when you add protein rich food which are acidic in nature they will cause discomfort and distress to the digestion so avoid those again starch and acidic food like citrus food you should avoid it so starch like your rice, wheat, pastas, you should not take with citrus food. Also avoid taking too many different kind of protein because protein is hard to digest and when you are taking 2-3 combination of protein at the same time, yeah. it again will lead to indigestion, cause you blotting, gastritis and certain food items combinations that you should avoid for example see fruits fruits are easy to digest yeah. so avoid them adding with some other food items have them alone because they di digest fast uh, when we talk about uh, uh, vegetables and all you should include them with protein rich food like your dal beans meat fish chickens that will be go well but when you add anything else milk especially with them it will not get digested yes. Okay, so avoid that. Also, there are certain food like uh, tea. When we normally, pe our habit is taking tea with your breakfast, right? Which is not right. One thing, it will hinder the absorption iron. Secondly, it will cause in indigestion. So, it will be always advised to take tea or coffee after half an hour of your meal. Uh, apart from that, also, uh, sometimes we think, right, okay, uh, you can have curd with parathas and all, right? That is again not a good combination. Uh, it will cause uh, your digestion issues because it can cause blotting and all, right? So these are the few uh, 
combination that we should avoid it. Street food holds a central place in people's life, yeah. right? We all uh, try uh, tend to uh, indulge in this street, uh, food. street food once in a while. Um, how does uh, this uh, connection intervene uh, in causing gastro, gastro troubles? The problem with the street food is depends upon the hygiene because we don't know how much hygiene they are maintaining right. because the food can get contaminated uh, in between the changing of the hands, the proper hygiene is not there. Second thing is the way the preparation is going on, that means the purpose of cooking. Suppose they may undercook or, or the, because of fast, so many people are waiting, so they will undercook the food. So it can lead to the indigestion, so gastroenteritis like things. Okay. One more thing is, they will use work the oil same time. See the what happens is, uh, normally the good oil which is good for health is polyunsaturated fatty mm -hmm. acids. Mm -hmm. Suppose you heat the oil more, mm -hmm. the just like simple biochemistry, you can tell like the carbon atoms between the do bonds between carbon mm -hmm. to break and convert to saturated. Yeah, yeah. It's like trans fatty acids. Trans fats, yeah. So if you eat more the oil, mm -hmm. they convert more trans fatty acids. Okay. okay. So they will use because of cost constraint, they want to gain more profits. Mm -hmm. The street vendors they will use the same mm -hmm. oil for more repeatedly cooking. So that can lead to the other issues like causing the increase of uh, like mm -hmm. increase of the cholesterol rearrangements, that uh, absorption defects. Mm -hmm. That can also lead to gastroenteritis and other issues. One more thing is, we don't know about the food proper, suppose they are high quality food, suppose mm -hmm. some foods may be rotten yeah, vegetables sure. or them, they may use in that thing. So that can cause like, again the gastroenteritis like the issues they can cause. Some may have this bloating after eating street foods or this uh, belchings and also this heartburn regurgitation okay. symptoms they may develop. Also the high chance of food poisoning. Yeah, high chance of food poisoning also is there in our street vendors. They can have the hepatitis A, E, which are mm -hmm. easily transmissible through if there is no proper hygiene, hand washing and all. Mm -hmm. So they can cause jaundice, land up in liver failure, other issues. How do lifestyle choices and eating habits contribute to gas and bloating? And what dietary changes can help alleviate these symptoms? Okay. Also take on this. Yes. So uh, when it comes to lifestyle choices, many times we see people skip meals, as you said, right? So they give long gaps, which can again uh, lead to. Uh, uh, excess acid formations. Um, secondly, people uh, they don't have good hydration. Okay, uh, hydration is very important when it comes to digestion. digestion. So when they're not drinking enough water, it also hampers their digestive uh, digestion. Thirdly, um, sometimes uh, they eat very late, right? Um, uh, many times. Uh, the patient comes to me, I have seen that they will be having very late night or late night binging which is again not good it's because not when fun. you sleep immediately and when the digestion happening it will affect both your sleep and your digestion. Okay, so that is something one should avoid it. So having small frequent meals as you said, having good hydrations, um, having early dinner at least two to three hours before, before, you, before you sleep and having a light dinner that will help uh, including uh, ensuring that you include all the food groups um, have good fiber rich food in your diet include uh, fruits vegetables whole cereals nuts oily seeds have a balanced diet and do a proper meal planning that is very important okay. how do carbonated drinks contribute in gas blotting and other digestive issues yes. and how does it imp uh, impact our uh, system. Any healthier alternatives do I have? Basically the carbonated drinks, no, the bubbles in that, they contain carbon dioxide, right. CO2. So CO2 it goes, goes in digestive system, it causes bloating. That is the main thing which causes these carbonated drinks. And this impairs the digestion also. One more second thing is uh, the bloating also it causes mm -hmm. the way we feel more discomfort after the thing. One more thing, the, they will have more sweetness. Mm -hmm. Okay, they will have this uh, high level, sugar level high. The persons who are non-sensitive to sweetness, they may have these uh, allergic reactions also sometimes. Yeah, right. Sometimes they may contain caffeine. So it, the caffeine can impair the it, digestion also sometimes. Right. Okay, sometimes it can, the mucosa like proper, like there will lining in the mucosa, the mm -hmm. stomach, mm -hmm. sorry. The, it can impa it can form a layer in that. Most of the people, they will have biryani with right. this most of things. What happens now, whenever we eat any fatty meal, it forms a layer around the stomach. Okay. So it impairs the digestion. What alternative we can suggest is some people they still they want the, this suppose drinks they want during having meals they can have this uh, 
flavored drinks like uh, they can store like this orange mm -hmm. or citrus in the water so and just like, like, lemon, juice. like lemon juice like thing they okay. can have uh, some people who are uh, citrus having they may have increased acidity mm -hmm. but who are not prone for say so they, they, they can have this lemon juice so well, water is also enough right uh, this flavored water which i am telling mm -hmm. you can store sometime orange or uh, lemons in that water and you mm -hmm. can have this flavored water mm -hmm. that can have at least you can have feeling of that having a little bit of juice or like that Oh, okay. Right. Instead of having this carbohydrate drinks, instead you can have this herbal tea also okay. while having any food that is also good for health. Which are alternatives which you have can choose instead of carbohydrate drinks. How does exercise impact dietary needs okay. and diets to health? And what should people keep in mind when planning meals around workouts? Okay. So uh, exercise will uh, improve both digestion and metabolism of a person. Yeah. And it actually uh, seen that it will uh, improve the gut function, right? So when you're a person is exercising, they have to ensure few things. That is, uh, always have a um, pre snacks at least one hour before, before the workout, which is uh, rich in complex carbs and protein. They should avoid taking fat right. because that will take time to time digest digestion and will also. cause in uh, issues during workout. So. Uh, a good carb, uh, carb based and protein based they can either go for something like bananas or some oatmeal they can have but if it, or smoothie banana smoothie but if you are making smoothie don't add peanut butter <laughs> right? secondly um, they should be uh, uh, whenever it comes to exercise if they are not doing in the morning or any other time of the day they should be at least two to three hours gap after a full meal Okay. at least half an hour to one hour gap after a snack snacks yes that's very important and uh, keep hydration uh, even during when you're exercising so sipping on uh, water in between or some fluids will always help so don't gulp too much of fluid but yes little little you should be taking it throughout your uh, during your work working out time so that is very important uh, the food dye allure allure allure, right. allure red can potentially uh, cause problem in our intestine, hmm. right? How does it actually affect and what alternatives do you suggest for this? The dyes normally which use the cellulite especially in the food, what happens is uh, the lining which you are telling aerially, mucosa lining of the stomach, mm -hmm. it causes a leaky gut in the medical terminology, mm -hmm. it causes leaky gut. Mm -hmm. So normally it prevents the whatever the stomach or whatever other intestinal tract, small intestine or it prevents the bacteria or whatever should not enter into the bloodstream. Okay. So whenever the salivary dies, what will happen? Mm -hmm. It's called leaky gut syndrome, we can call it as. Mm -hmm. So the bacteria, whatever you are eating, the other dye, it can enter into the bloodstream. Okay. okay. That causes the leaky gut syndrome, they can cause this diarrhea. On how they can have they can have low grade inflammation also okay. because of this leaky gut the mm -hmm. bacteria other organisms can enter into the bloodstream and can cause these infections. Okay. Uh, they have the gastroenteritis also. Okay. Because of they, they may have this condition low grade inflammation which mm -hmm. is not good for health. Mm -hmm. These are dyes. Alternative we can use like this even beetroot dyes or this uh, paprika okay. that uh, they can using uh, in that uh, some natural natural better even that. Uh, like turmeric powder, mm -hmm. which is better instead of the cellular head. So how can probiotics and uh, prebiotics support gut health and what are the best sources for each of this? Okay, so uh, probiotics uh, is something which contain beneficial bacteria, mm -hmm. right? It's already have those bacteria which when we take those food items, it goes and uh, give uh, uh, they be beneficial to our gut function. Prebiotics are the food which uh, will take, they get into our gut, they ferment and they act as a food for our bacteria. bacteria. So when we include both, right, it will support our gut function, it will ensure the environment of our gut uh, flora is rich, right. So um, overall we need to include both pre and probiotic. What are the uh, sources are for probiotic, uh, curd, buttermilk, yogurt. yogurt. Those are easily available and great source. Apart from that, uh, we can have sour pickle, sour dough bread, kefir. So these are the few other uh, examples of uh, probiotics that we can include. When it comes to prebiotic, uh, the best sources are whole grains, food rich in fiber. Fiber, right? So fiber. whole grains, pulses, fruits, vegetables 
seeds those all are good source of uh, prebiotic uh, also uh, whole cereals like oats fruits like banana apple uh, chickpea, chickpea yes soybean this all are the good source of prebiotic Rebet. yes processed food often contain additives like salt sugar and fat right um, which can contribute to digestive issues and other health problem how does this affect the digestive system and what long term risk do they pose the means the ultra process what are the process for like this uh, like which like chips packets all the processed food mean they contain high amount of salt because for long life shelf life mm -hmm. they have more preservatives also Right. They contain more of sugars, more of salt content, and more of other artificial sweeteners. Or uh, this to increase the life, shelf life, they mm -hmm. add is all more of the, these things. So what happens when our persons who are taking these things? So processed foods, first of all, they will have this low-grade inflammation. What I am telling right. that they have this bloating, mm -hmm. they have this gastroenteritis also. They have this all of these reflux symptoms. This thing, the persons who are more from like elderly. Suppose if they take, take the because of more high salt content in that. They will have this increased blood pressure, because hypertension. Uh, hypertension. Right. Suppose because high sugar content, they may lead to diabetes, diabetes. also. That's why in chronic liver disease patients, we mm -hmm. tell compulsory because anyway because of we'll tell tell them for salt restriction diet mm -hmm. in liver disease patients. Mm -hmm. We'll tell them to not to take this processed foods. Okay. Because we will hardly will tell them to take some two mm -hmm. to three grams of salt per day. Okay. But in this already contains high salt Excess content. Salt. So what happens is every molecule of sodium they eat, mm -hmm. the 10 water molecules accumulate. Okay. So they will have more prone for ascites like fluid accumulation. Right. So for chronic liver disease patients also, for especially and also other general audience also like mm -hmm. uh, avoiding ultra processed foods is better. What is the importance of meal frequency okay. and timing in maintaining digestive health and what are some recommended eating patterns? Okay. So having a gap of 2 to 3 hours between the meals is always good having early dinner is always good um, having a uh, earlier meal planning is good mm. so you will ensure that uh, you plan a balanced diet um, so when we talk about balance that we have to ensure that all the food groups are included right like fruits vegetables cereals dairy uh, meat or protein rich food all are included and also we have to ensure that in each group we have more variety so when i talk about cereals try to include like whole cereals wheat chapatis or you can include millets which millets are also. really good and people with having uh, gluten sensitive they can go for uh, millets right like uh, Bajra, Jawar, Ragi, all those they can include oats, they can include quinoa, they can include uh, even when it will talk about pulses, so include both lentils and legumes as legumes are also a very good source of prebiotics. Prebiotics. In the excess take off point is what like uh, which exercise like moderate exercise or like yes, moderate exercise uh, of uh, 150 minutes, minutes like a week, spine. Week spine. Yes. Like what do uh, recent trials this means studies shown that like brisk walking, like one minute you should do like hundred steps, like sixty seconds. Okay. Like brisk walking, just okay. at least persons who are having this or some knee issues or uh, they can have this at least because they have pain and all they can mm -hmm. do run and all at mm -hmm. least they can they do can brisk walking. Brisk walking. Mm -hmm. That brisk walking at least one fifty minutes per uh, week, week is uh, advisable. Okay. 